Hey guys, welcome to the end of day three of the 90 day carnivore diet. Um, again, this is my diary. So, um, and if it benefits you, that's awesome. Thank you so much. If you subscribe and you interact with me and all that good stuff, thank you so much. Um, yeah, as you can see, I shaved. Yeah, this is, um, this isn't like a birthmark or anything. This is just from like after I shave. So I think it's just, it'll go away. But anyways, yeah, I shaved and I assure you I'm not wearing the same clothes. Uh, I just wear a lot of black shirts. I'm just letting you know. Okay. So today was day three. Again, same thing. I didn't eat anything, um, all day from, the time I, I uh, from till about 7.45 p.m. So I'm recording this an hour later, just to let you know. So I ate an hour ago. And um, to let you know what I had for dinner, um, I had two-thirds pound of uh, meat left over, some ground beef. I had two-thirds pound. Again, it was the like the 73.27, I think I told you guys, that I bought a few days ago. Um... But yeah, I had like two thirds, like it was like two thirds of a pound um, left over. So I took that and what I did was, and I like to let you guys know how I made these these foods too. So that way if you're following along and you want to eat, you know, if, if this is your day three and I'm on day four, you know what I mean? Like I want you to be able to watch this and then tomorrow for your day three, or if you're on day two watching this, I should say, then tomorrow for your day three, if you wanted to follow along. But I just took like the turd, uh, the turd, <laughs> the two thirds, uh, pounds of meat and I flattened it out pretty flat. You know what I mean? About almost like a big, big old hamburger. Right. And then I flattened it out and then I got my pan up to about like 300. It started kind of smoking a little bit, you know, just check the temperature, maybe 275, something like there. And then I put that on there, seared it for like three minutes. And while it was searing, I sprinkled the other side. <sighs> we're just you know not a ton but just put a little bit of um himalayan pink salt on the one side three minutes went by flipped it had a good little sear on the bottom nice you know or that mayor effect or whatever um flipped it anyways and then took that down for another three minutes and then what i did is at that point i kind of took my potato masher and held the meat and I drained off most of all the grease because I just don't like too much of the hamburger grease you know it's I just can't do that much hamburger grease for some reason um but I drained off a lot of that and then I mashed it up with the masher until I had a you know decent little ground beef and then I crumbled in two bacon strips, just crumbled them up. I had them left over when I when I made like a full package from day one, and I, I stored it. So I took two more two strips out of the the Tupperware container, crumbled them up, and let them kind of warm up and and incorporate into the meat. Meanwhile, I started to fry some eggs, and I put you know just a pat of butter in the pan, in another pan, and I made four. Um, over medium eggs. I like them over medium because you should, you don't want to cook the yolks too much. You don't want to cook out too much of that goodness, but I can't do runny yolk or runny whites. Sorry, I'm not there. <laughs> can't do it. Um, but so I made four sunny, I wanted them sunny side up today. I just, I just did. And I put them on a plate. The last one, the yolk broke on me as I was putting on the plate. But, um, and then uh, also with the beef and bacon, I took four ounces of shredded or Vermont white cheddar and I shredded it over top of the meat. So a nice little layer. And if you don't know what four ounces is, it's like when you buy the little sort of eight ounce package of cheese, it was half that roughly. Uh, cause we had about half left over from when I used it, um, last night. For the burgers so i shredded like four ounces over that so i had the four eggs and of course each egg um when i was cooking them i did a little bit of himalayan salt not a lot just a little bit for flavor but um and then 
I had for with my dinner, I had about 12 ounces. So like, you know, oh, right here, you know, like these tumblers. So I had like maybe about a little, maybe over half, about this much of unsweet tea. So I, I brewed myself. Um, I took th a three liter, like a, it was an empty um, cranberry juice. Uh, you know, if you're married and you're females, you know what I'm talking about why you would have that in your house. But this was empty, uh, empty. So I rinsed it all out and all that. Um, and I took the label off. And uh, anyways, I fill it up with hot water. And I actually put three of the family size Lipton tea bags in the top, screwed it down, shook it around about eight times, stuck it in the fridge overnight. I did this last night. And then today, took the tea bags out the top. And, um, and like I said, I had about, you know, about 12 ounces roughly, or, uh, you know what I mean? I showed you guys, uh, but, uh, you know, of, uh, unsweet tea and it was really good. It was it actually, I am a huge sweet tea <laughs> person. Um, uh, I, again, a sugar addict, right? Like, like a lot of us, um, but, but believe it or not, it wasn't that bad. I just try to think of it as like flavored water and, but it, I brewed it pretty strong in a way and it, but it just, it wasn't bitter. It wasn't, you know, it actually tasted pretty decent. Um, I was, I was surprised. Now, am I going to do unsweet tea every day? Um, no, but, um, I'm going to start trying to reduce my coffee because I've been noticing that, you know, again, like I was telling you yesterday, I was had a little bit of a restless night, and I normally can sleep really well, um, but um, maybe it's some of the newfound energy from this. I don't know, but regardless, I, I don't want to blame the, the diet yet. Uh, I think it's just the late night coffee, but either way, I'm going to try to reduce the late night coffee or whatever. This time I had a little bit of unsweet tea. Um, cause you can pretty much have ice water, unsweet tea or black coffee for most carnivore diets. Now, if you're doing the strict 90 day challenge from like Dr. Ken Berry, then no, you don't want to do cheese or, um, tea or whatever, like unsweet tea or, or coffee. You just, just do water and meat and stuff. But I'm just letting you know what I did because I already know from doing this that Tea handles really well in my system, like unsweet tea. I, that was what I did the last time I was a carnivore. Um, and of course, the shredded Vermont white cheddar. It's a, it's a, I, I thought it was on sale, but it was a white cheddar. And that's what caught my eye. I was like, hey, it's a white cheddar. Let me look at the ingredients. And it was from Cabot, like C A B O T. Uh, and I looked and I'm like, I looked at the ingredients because that's what you want to do as a carnivore. You want to read the, your packages. And it was just your basic, like, you know, cheese ingredients. That was it. And there was no, and then I compared it to a normal colored cheese. And of course, it showed a few extra ingredients for the colored cheese. So I was like, oh, awesome. So I got the Vermont white cheddar on sale and got a couple. So uh, two of the eight ounce packages, which I've already now gone through at least one of them for sure. <laughs> so, um, but the eggs, I ended up, I, I will say like the, the, the meat, like when you're hungry as a carnivore, you will crave the meat. You'll be like, yeah. And like, you'll start eating it and you'll be like, oh yeah. And then you're going to get to a point, And again, about two thirds of the pounds of meat. when I was getting toward the end, I started saying, okay, I'm done. You know, you just hit that limit, you know, but while you're eating, it's like, oh, it's just, it's satisfying. And, but I'll tell you what, it was really good. And then I took it to another level. I took my three eggs that had the yolks still good. And I just, and I cracked open the yolks. Like I, I ripped them open. I held them over the meat mixture because I had them on a separate little plate. And I, I just dripped the three yolks all over my, my ground beef cheese bacon mixture and that that yolk created this creamy it just took that meat to another level and and really made it so good so good and of course i ate the white 
um, pieces of the eggs with whatever leftover yolks and stuff. I kind of ate that first because it was I didn't want them to get too cold. I don't like cold eggs. Like cold, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? That's, I'm kind of weird like that. Like, I, I don't mind, like, cold deviled eggs. It, just weird stuff. You know what I mean? Um, so, no, I wanted to cover uh, two things real quick because this is in the beginning, and, and I wanted to share. Um, because as as if, if this is helping anybody, you know, you're going to inevitably face challenges like me, so I, I like to share when I come across them, and... So, oh, and um, so two things. One is cravings, okay? So some people say, well, if I'm, if I'm satiated, if I'm hungry or not hungry, if I'm satiated and I'm not hungry, then I'm not too worried about cravings. Um, don't get fooled by this myth. It, it is a myth, really. Or I mean, maybe not. Okay, I take that back. It may not be like a myth. I think some people that aren't morbidly obese, like me, some people that are just, they started carnivore, maybe they were up 40 pounds, and they were just like, ah, you know, I'm, and, and they put on like the married body, right? And they were just like, ah, you know, I got to lose some weight, and you know, I'm a, I'm a fatty. But then there's like people like us that are like 100 and 50 pounds overweight from our normal weight, right? And we are like morbidly obese and we have a, like a real extra layer problem. I, I call it an extra layer because it just seems like I'm not cut out to, to want to work out and want to do things where some of these people are. So I have to work even that much harder as well to try to, to survive through, through this. So anyways, what I wanted to draw on was when I quit smoking. So when I smoked for over 20 years and then like 13 ish years ago, whatever, I just cold Turkey. I got to the point where it was like my breathing and I was, I weighed a lot less, you know, I weighed a lot less. Um, but I'm like my breathing and I, I had a very physical job and it just, it, I just was done. I was, I was done. I never thought I'd be done. I always joked around and I was always going to keep smoking forever. But I quit. I just cold turkey. And it only took me like three to five days to really get over like the nicotine withdrawals, to be honest with you, even after 20 plus years of it. But it's the habits. It's the habits. That's what I discovered was the hardest thing was the triggers was the was the habitualness that your mind is programmed to it's not so much the nicotine again you'll shake that you'll shake those things it's just the triggers and it's your mind that you have to battle and so so for example and, and if you're a smoker or if you ever was a smoker you're going to relate to this but when i quit I had an epiphany. I realized one day driving to work, it, it's, it's that it wasn't the nicotine. It wasn't that it, we live as smokers. We live for smoke breaks. Now we don't consciously always just go around like, I need a smoke break. I need a smoke break. When's the smoke break? When's the smoke? But even subconsciously, we're always looking for that smoke break. You're at work. And then, you know, it's break coming up like, oh, I need a cigarette. You know, break comes like, hell yeah. And then you smoke. And then some of us, if you have a decent enough break or long enough break, you might be like, I got time for another one or three, whatever. Whatever your break is, you, as a smoker, you'll maximize it sometimes. Unless you're one of those like wimpy smokers that were just like, a couple puffs, I'm done. No, 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 man. I was like packing a half, you know, <laughs> you know. So, uh, you know, I'm squeezing in cigarettes at lunchtime. You know, you might eat, whatever, get out and smoke. Because you ate. Anytime you eat, you're going to smoke, right? Anytime you, you do the dirty things, right, you're going to go smoke. Anytime you step out of the house, if you're like, if you were like me and, and my wife, we didn't smoke in the house. So we'd step out, smoke a cigarette, whatever. When I mean, you go to, go to the gas station, smoke a cigarette on the way to the gas station. Go in the gas station, do what you got to do. Grab more cigarettes, whatever, get in the car, smoke another one on the way home, <laughs> you know, 
it's it's always that that opportunity that you're looking for to smoke. So your your program. So that was the biggest thing I had to battle when I quit. It's like I used to be driving. I mean, there was even literally like a year later, a year after I quit, I was just driving down the road one day and I don't remember what it was. It's like I was halfway to my destination. All of a sudden I was like, hey, I got time for a smoke. And I reached down out of instinct to grab my pack of smokes that normally was like in my little cubby thing in my car. And I was like, whoa, that's weird. It's like I've quit for like a year. <laughs> it was just like, but these triggers. And then part the reason why is because I figured out that that particular part of the road was about the halfway point at this was you or that last this is about where i would light up to smoke one more cigarette before going to that destination so i wanted to cover that because i thought that's important it might help you because in this i'm already having those triggers like today i was at work and i was just driving and all of a sudden an instant thought. And, and it's just like these instant quick thoughts. They feel like maybe a, a quick conversation, but they're just super quick, all like in an instant. And it was like, I had this instant thought of like, Hey, I have a few bucks. I need to go to the gas station and get me like a treat. And it was just so quick. And I started looking for where I can go. And I'm like, wait a minute, what am I doing? I'm full. I'm fine. So that's the mental battle you have to have is when you have those cravings, you have to say, wait a minute, because they're not actual chemical cravings anymore. It's just your body saying, hey, man, you know, this was part of your life and you habitually did this in your life. So much of your life. You know, how many times has it been ingrained in your head about breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert, you know? And you don't have to follow that format, you know, dessert, whatever, this and that, you know, I mean, and, and even me and my family, we got into that routine every time we just started getting like dessert, like, hey, what are we going to have for dessert? You know, whenever we go shop for dinner, oh, pick up some dessert, too. It's always like that. So it's those type of habits. You know, can you substitute? Yeah, no. But at the same time, you, you don't want to just replace things, you know, I mean, just just because the, the, you just want to really learn to mentally overcome that the best you can. I'm telling you, it's, this is the best thing to do. That's why I would like diet with cheat days is never a good thing. If your diet consists of a cheat day, no, don't do it. That's definitely one thing I've learned over the years. Because it's like, oh, I'm never going to get to have pizza again. I'm never going to get to have, you know, chili or whatever. I don't know. And the thing is, you don't want those things. You shouldn't want pizza again. I know it's hard because I, I loved pizza. But it's you got to think of it like a drug. You gotta you know, you have to be like a drug guy and be like, oh, man, I used to love cocaine. I used to love these drugs. I used to love these things. Because they made me feel so good. Oh, they were so good. Same thing with food. With those types of foods. You have to look at them as toxic foods now. All right. So. Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm telling you not as. I'm not preaching you. I'm not telling you this. I'm also telling myself this. Okay. I have to reconvince myself these things too. I've got to mentally. So I'm talking to you. But I'm actually talking to me too. Okay, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, the other thing. I I made butter bites tonight. <laughs> so I was just talking about replacing desserts. Well, butter bites, if you don't know, butter bites are almost like a carnivore diet or dessert. And butter bites, what they are is there's a couple ways you can do it. The, the basic version is you take a stick of butter and you or, or two and you melt it in a pan over like a medium heat. Maybe close to medium high, but, you know, medium ish. And you're, you're going to give it like 10 minutes, but you're going to let it melt. You're going to keep an eye on it. Maybe 
Take a little spatula, a little mini silicone spatula or something, just kind of stir it around. And after about eight, nine, ten minutes, whenever it is, it's going to foam up. It's going to get foamy. But as you kind of stir, you're going to start maybe seeing a little bit of brown kind of swirls. And you'll eventually start to even kind of see a little bit of the, the buttery, buttery, buttery liquid that's under the bubbles. And once it's sort of like this golden brown, like this nice dark golden brown, not, not too dark, but pretty, pretty brown, you take it off the heat, let it cool down for a few minutes, and then you stir it. You stir it up, you know, you put it, you, you pour that pan into like, um, a, uh, like a like a measuring cup, like a glass pouring measuring cup, and you pour that in there, and you scrape out all the good. Well, you're gonna see a bunch of like almost like it's almost gonna look like really fine brown crumbs in the bottom of the pan. Scrape all that down as well, and then you're going to and I what I did was I kind of stirred it with a whisk in the bottom of that cup real good, and then poured like about four or five into molds. And the molds are just little small, about this deep, and about this round, little candy molds, right? They got, it comes like eight or nine or ten of them, like in this mold, silicone mold things, you know? And they're all, all out there for the holidays. I think I had like pineapple and palm trees or something. I don't know. They were in the house, and we never used those. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to use those. But, you know, just I poured like four or five, stirred it up, four or five, you know, and, and do a few more, stir it up because you want to get those those bottom bits in there. And then when you finally get toward the end, you'll notice that there's still going to be that that sort of a little bit of that bottom uh, graininess down there. If you have any left over, go back to your original ones and just slowly scrape a couple drops of the brown, the brown stuff into each each one. Um, and then I covered, I put the, the two silicone mats were on a, um, frying pan and then I just covered the frying pan in like a sheet of aluminum foil and I just stuck it in the fridge. Uh, um, and, uh, we have two fridges. One's like a, one that's like downstairs that we just never use, but we had got it. Um, it was like one of those dinged up like specials that that they were going to pretty much throw out so we we paid almost nothing for it kind of things but anyways i we i threw that in there and so that's going to be my dessert tomorrow um a couple of them so each one's probably going to be just like you know like i said they're butter bites but now i used salted butter just to let you know now you can use unsalted butter you can use salted butter it depends on your taste but when you brown that butter, it just takes it to this different level. And when you put that in the fridge and then they, they, they firm up, you just pop out a couple and, you know, just and they're almost like a dessert um, for you. They're like a treat. You know, so at the end of the night, when you get done with your dinner, if you didn't get a lot of butter that day, or like I said, if you're running behind that day, you didn't get a lot of butter. Maybe you're eating some chicken, something that's a little more lean. And you need some some butter bites, you know, pop you a few butter bites. Um, but you can't go wrong with them. Now, some people, I'm trying not to use really hardly any spices right now. I'm only using pink salt. Um, when I did the when I was first a carnivore, I did do some spices. I did do some garlic, um, salt, pepper. Actually, I didn't do much garlic. Now that I think about it, mostly just salt. But I did do pepper. I think I'm trying to remember, but I did a few, I did a few seasonings, um, and they didn't seem to affect me. I, I felt really good. Um, but I would say if you can just stick to salt in the first 90 day thing, that's what I'm going to try to do. And then after 90 days, I might incorporate, like I might try garlic again. Cause I love garlic. I did. I might try it. I might try garlic again and see if that's something I can, can, can manage. Um, but anyways, just to wrap up, because this video got a little long that I, longer than I wanted, but I felt like I really wanted to, to, to cover that in the beginning, um, is the Butter Bites. Again, it's, it's just something. Oh, the Butter Bites is something that 
You can also, that's what, that's what I was going with the whole spice thing, is you can, you know, just do like little dash of cinnamon in all those if you want to allow yourself to have cinnamon. That could be something in the future, but I've also heard that if you do just that little dash of cinnamon in, you know, like, um, basically in your, in your, uh, silicone mat or your silicone molds, I'm sorry. I was get I got distracted because my screensaver came up for some crazy reason. But if your uh, silicone mat, your, your molds, you could put a little bit of, um, uh, cinnamon, sprinkled in the bottom of them and then you pour in your butter and blah 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 you can have so there's that hint of cinnamon with the butter sounds really good but i mean right now i'm i'm gonna avoid cinnamon right now now i might, I might do that later like i said i'm gonna incorporate probably certain things that i've heard were decently healthy like garlic and cinnamon so i may use those i don't know yet i haven't decided right now the first 90 days i'm not gonna worry about it so I just want to let you know what I did, how I did things, and maybe that'll help. All right, guys, we'll see you tomorrow, day four.